I've made most of these mistakes, so I'm hoping to help you not make them as well. First, a little disclaimer. I am not a professional organizer, but I am someone who has helped a few of my friends get organized throughout the years. I also just love organization. Let's get into it. Okay, this one is huge and I'm sure you've heard it before, but it needs to be repeated. Do not start organizing until you have decluttered. You're organizing things that you actually don't want. Why would you do that? Number one must be getting rid of everything you're not actually going to use or you want or need and then organize the rest. Okay, this one is kind of a controversial one. So I'm starting with controversy. <gasps> this is a trend that has been out there and I just don't get it. It's the trend of organizing by color. Now I understand organizing by color if that makes sense, like makeup colors, paint colors, or nail polish colors. Things like that make sense to me. But organizing by color for like, let's say your books. I, I don't get that. How are you ever going to remember what color the book is that you want to find? or organizing your snacks in your pantry by the color. I don't get that. I mean, I think what happens is it looks really pretty when you first did it, but then reality hits you in the face and you now have to go find that book and you're like, oh, what color was this book? If this is working for you, please tell me how, how do you make this work? Organize your books alphabetically, either by the name of it or by the authors makes sense. Hey, I just wanted to pop on here real quick and say that this channel is all about simplifying life in your midlife. I cover all things about beauty, your home, organizing, decluttering, and I'm even on a health journey to lose weight and get healthier. If that interests you, please consider subscribing. All right, back to the video. Okay, this one's a hard one to describe, but I'm hoping I can do it. It's sacrificing function over the design. When we see these beautifully organized spaces and you try to make it look like that, but the functionality of it does not necessarily work. Here's a case in point. In my entranceway, I have this tray. I actually love the white on the wood. I think it's beautiful. Here's the problem. When we go to put our keys there, it's so loud because that's glass. I used to have a wood tray and I loved that, but I didn't like the idea of the wood on the wood. The functionality of it does not work because it's loud. It needs to change. I sacrificed the function because I thought the design was more important. Thinking the picture of what something looks like instead of how it will actually be. For instance, this kind of calendar is very popular right now. It's an acrylic calendar. They can be on your wall. They could be on your refrigerator. You could put them wherever it is that you need them. It's so cute until life again smacks you in the face. First off, my handwriting is abysmal. It's bad when I'm writing on a piece of paper. Forget writing on a wall. You may have better handwriting and you're going to be like, I, I think it'll look great. Not all of us do. I dare say that that picture of what that acrylic thing looks like isn't going to look that pretty when everything in life gets written on that calendar. The whole purpose of that calendar is for you to now use it. So instead of it looking all pretty and cute, it now looks like a big bunch of writing and mess on it, which is what the function of it is. It's fine to use that if you don't care about that. But if you care about it looking cute all the time, that is never going to stay cute. Think about what it actually will look like once it's used, not in its pristine form. Another example of this would be an entranceway. I've seen this so many times, again, on Pinterest and Instagram, is this beautiful like mud room or entranceway where you've got the cute little pegs and you've got the little cute straw hat and you've got this cute pillow, all the cuteness of it. And you're like, 
That looks so serene and beautiful. So here's my entranceway. This is what I would love it to look like. I actually have a straw hat that I use. It actually sits there most of the time. A little purse. I have a pillow there, a little plant. I can, it looks pretty, it looks organized. You would think, wow, she's so organized. This is what it actually looks like most of the time because we are a family of four. We use this entranceway. Life is messy. We have coats hanging here, umbrellas. I usually have things that I need to take out to the car that we're going to return. That's what the reality of it looks like. Don't think that you're not being organized if your entranceway looks like that or your calendar looks like it's been used. That's reality. It doesn't mean you're not organized. It means you actually are using the function the way it's supposed to function. Okay, I am in the middle of editing this video and I just had to come on here real quick and say something that I forgot to mention when I originally did this video. When you are looking at all of these pictures, I want you to look. What do they all have in common? They have many of the same bottle or product. They all look the same or all the colors are all go together beautifully. And that's just not reality. The reality is, is you buy things and it's very hard to make it all look the same or you have to spend a fortune to make it look that way. It just annoys me when that's what you see as organization. What you're actually seeing is staging. So you've decluttered, you've organized, and now it's time for you to put these things back in their space. If you do not have room for growth, what's going to happen is you're going to buy one product and that one product is now going to thwart all your efforts of staying organized. If there's no place to put it, you now have to rethink your organization. That might not happen ever, or it might not happen for a long time. So now this thing is going to sit on the counter, is going to be things that you have to move around in order to get to the other stuff in this container or drawer or cabinet or whatever. If there's no room for growth, your organization is not done. Either you need a bigger space or you need to declutter more. There is another YouTuber called, I think her name is Dawn. It's The Minimal Mom. And she has this saying, which I really do like. I will link her channel below because it's a really good channel. She's a, a minimalist. I am not a min minimalist, but she talks a lot about organizing and decluttering because of that. So it's a good channel. But she has this saying, I think it's good. It needs to be just as easy to put something away as it is to leave it out. So I have this hair clip <laughs> and I need to now put it away. It needs to be just as easy for me to put this hair clip down or to have it in this drawer that I just drop it in or the container or whatever it is. If I have to open a drawer, push something away, open a box, whatever it is, I am more likely to just go, oh, I don't want to do all that. You don't want to move things in order to put this away. So I did this whole organizing thing of all our medicine, the over-the-counter stuff, and also um, like a first aid kit. And I have it here underneath my sink. This was not organized well because it is so cumbersome to get into it. Does it look nice? Yes, but here's the reality. It's three containers and none of us like getting anything out of it because it's a pain. We have to open the cabinet. We have to try to get things out. The jars do not fit in the container because they have to be sideways because it's not tall enough. It just is not working and it's because it's too difficult to get it out. So therefore we know it's going to be just as difficult to put it away and we don't. Organizing where you want it to be instead of where it should be. We all have ideas of where we want things to be organized. Think about your home. Where do things normally just get plopped? Any horizontal space is a drop off point. This is our office. We're in the process of redoing it. I do not want 
the inbox to be there. I want the inbox to be in this little alcove in our cabinets there. My husband wants it to be on the desk. Now, I should say that predominantly my husband uses this desk more than I do. But I hate walking into our front door and looking to the right and seeing that stuff. So I'm in the process of putting something on the desk itself that would hold everything, but not be ugly. But the important thing is, is not trying to make this space be something that it's not. If the place that people want to just drop things is right there on that desk, then I need to have something that will be there that I'm okay with looking at. This one is something I've been so, so guilty of. Organizing for only me and not considering the people who I live with. I love the whole thought of having a pantry of everything decanted, all the granola bars, all lined up nice and perfectly straight. The cereal is in the cereal containers and not in their box thing. Everything is not in the original packaging because that's what all the organizing gurus say to do. Do I want to constantly be the pantry police and have that stress? I don't. I just have accepted the fact that if, if they don't put it in the container, I'm okay with it. Like I need to organize with the fact of I live with three other adults who are using this space. If I lived by myself, it would all be completely perfectly organized. Everything would look beautiful, but I would rather have a not as pretty pantry and have my family members around me. This one I have been guilty with in the past and I have learned my lesson big time. When we all get into the mood of organizing, I'm gonna get organized, everything's gonna be great. I'm gonna go to the store and get a whole bunch of containers and I'm going to organize this space. So did you hear the mistake? The mistake was I went and got containers before I organized, before I decluttered. That's even more important. Do not even consider walking into the container store, Target, Home Goods, Walmart, wherever it is that you shop. Don't even consider going there until you have decluttered the space, you have organized, and number three, you have measured what is going to go in that space. So before you go into the store, you can go, I need a container that is about one foot wide and four inches tall. That's what will fit here. You've measured it. And you know that the stuff that you need to organize will fit in that space. Buy containers for what you actually need. And also, go make sure you don't already have one. Okay, this is important. There are a lot of organizing gurus. I mean, I would not consider myself an organizing guru, but I do like to be organized and you're listening to me right now. It's very important to think to yourself, is this something that actually myself or my family can keep up with? Okay, here's a case in point. It's very popular to put clothing back in a drawer in this filing system, this way of folding your clothes so that they all line up and that apparently you can go through and choose your shirt. Personally, I think that's crazy, <laughs> but if it works for you, that's fine. But are you the only one doing it? Are you going to do this for your kids? Are your kids actually going to go through and keep them filed that way? Or are you going to be frustrated because they're not putting things back in this filed way? Does that make sense? If it's stressing you, it's not a good system for you. One of the hardest areas to organize is our closets because we have those fantasy selves that we think are going to fit into clothes or they don't fit or we're not sure if we like them. I show you my simple process of organizing a closet, especially if you have been on a weight loss journey. I will see you maybe in that one or another one. God bless.